Hello and welcome to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Jodine Bisset Joseph. Now, World Maritime Day will be observed this year on Thursday, the 29th of September. New Technologies for Greener Shipping is this year's theme, which the International Maritime Organization describes as reflecting the need to support a green transition of the maritime sector into a sustainable future while leaving no one behind. On their website, the organization goes on to state that the theme provides an opportunity to focus on the importance of a sustainable maritime sector and the need to build back better and greener in a post-pandemic world. Now, here to talk to us a little bit about the observation of the day and the theme, um, and so much more, by the way, is uh, Mr. Christa, sorry, Christopher Alexander, who's actually the Director of Maritime Affairs at SASPA. So first of all, thank you for joining us today, Mr. Alexander. And thank you for inviting the um, Maritime Division um, on behalf of SASPA to come and share some information um, with the general public and especially our seafarers and our maritime community. Okay, brilliant. All right. Now we're going to start from the real basics. Um, it's been a while. I've talked to you before at yes. MCN, <laughs> um, but we're going to start with the real basics. Whereas, tell us a little bit about World Maritime Day. What, what, why is there a World Maritime Day and why was this day even, why are we even observing this day? Well, World Maritime Day is celebrated on an annual, annual basis. Mm -hmm. And um, the general public, um, we often hear about airlines, uh, because we can see it, we travel more often. Mm -hmm. But then the, imagine 80% of shipping mm -hmm. goods is via the sea. Okay. So you can see the importance of shipping. Yeah. In terms of the, the high cost of, of um, we experienced recently on our shelves, again, it goes down to shipping in terms of the backlog that mm -hmm. we had on shipping. So when you look at our daily lives, it's always impacted by shipping. Right. And when you say shipping, the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, it's almost a sister organization mm -hmm. of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And they deal with all maritime related issues. And to show the importance of it, they normally visit different topics mm -hmm. that impacts the maritime sector, mm -hmm. the seafarers, mm -hmm. economies as well. And we're now moving into the, the blue economy. That's mm -hmm. the buzzword right now, the blue economy. Right. So the IMO thought it was opportune. Mm -hmm. And St. Lucia being part of that wider body, mm -hmm. the IMO, mm -hmm. to go into greener technologies okay. within the maritime sector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hence, the theme for this year would be how we can introduce mm -hmm. new technologies mm -hmm. or greener technologies mm -hmm. within the maritime sector right. to benefit the ordinary persons, mm -hmm. economies, mm -hmm. to enhance efficiency mm -hmm. and likewise create additional employment. Okay. Now you, you mentioned a couple of things there. You told you said like to enhance efficiency. How do you see um, the the, the um, implementation of these new ways of doing things and these new technologies actually having that effect on the sector that we have in St. Lucia. Right. So in terms of, of um, efficiency, mm -hmm. I can give you in the local context, um, most of the boaters, they were using a two-stroke engine, okay. which was, um, they utilized more fuel. Mm -hmm. um, there was greater emissions um, using that type of engine. They're now moving on to the four-stroke engine. Mm -hmm. And it, it means that they would spend less on fuel less on breakdowns in engine. Mm -hmm. And whenever an, an activity um, the cost has been reduced. Mm -hmm. The expectation is that the benefits will go towards the consumer. Right. So the less you can spend for an activity or an operation, mm -hmm. the better it is for the consumer. Hopefully, we will pay less for that activity. Mm -hmm. And likewise, the boating sector. Mm -hmm. If, for example, we can create a greater efficiency within the boating sector. Mm -hmm. If right now we can um, utilize um, technologies for us to reduce the cost of fuel mm -hmm. on those uh, um, ships there. The shelves, the, um, our items on the shelves, the prices will go down mm -hmm. because the cost of shipping always affects mm -hmm. the, the rate at which the consumer pays mm -hmm. on the, um, in, in, in stores. Right. That is the whole effect of efficiency. For example, one area we can look at uh, is in terms of um, the fuel content that ships utilize. Mm -hmm. For example, um, within the maritime sector, ships normally utilize what we call heavy 
crude or heavy fuel. Heavy fuel, it emits greater um, pollutants into the atmosphere. Mm. So what the IMO have done right now, the IMO is saying, we want to reduce the amount of fuel, the amount of sulfur mm. that's within the fuel, mm -hmm. okay? That in itself will have an impact on climate change. Right. Because you know, the more pollutants that goes into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the more likely that will create um, um, climate change. Mm -hmm. And there's also a health relation as far as utilizing heavy fuels. For example, when a ship comes into our port, mm -hmm. you can see the emissions coming out of the ship when it's alongside. Right. And then uh, we have close population centers within um, a port, mm -hmm. for example, castries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if right now we can tell those ships to utilize a low, lower fuel sulfur content when you are in port, right. it means that the emissions will not affect us health-wise. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the connectivity there mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. efficiency mm -hmm. and the health of the, of the nation and likewise um, yeah. the reduction Mm -hmm. in climate in climate change so mm -hmm. greater efficiency mm -hmm. greater savings for the persons operating the ships mm -hmm. and then greater savings for us when they go to the, the stores mm -hmm. to purchase our item which is 80 percent i said yeah. is shipped yeah yeah so i mean what you've described there is, is the, the the real positive um effects or very impacts that could be bestowed onto everyone Correct. but how possible do you see the seafarers and people adapting to the changes that need to be made in regards to making sure that we go forward and, and get what we want out of this? I think the important um, factor is um, I think persons um, realize mm -hmm. how beneficial it is to them as right. individuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's human nature. We want to know what's in it for us. Right. Um, the country going down that road is it cost prohibitive for St. Lucia to go down that road? Is it um, cost effective for a seafarer or a boat captain to mm -hmm. utilize the boat or adopt those type of technologies? Mm -hmm. So that is the mindset behind having those discussions there, is to um, educate our seafarers, educate our policy, mm -hmm. our policy makers. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there are certain um, IMO conventions mm -hmm. that is um, applicable for us to enjoy the benefits mm -hmm. of a greener um, um, economy mm -hmm. or shipping technology. Right. For example, we have what's called um, Air Pollution Convention. Mm -hmm. And what it seeks to do, it seeks to level the playing field. Okay? Mm -hmm. So all ships operating on the seas, you are to use a certain type of fuel. Okay. So for example, you may have boats, when they're further out at sea, they may use a high sulfur content mm -hmm. when they come closer to shore they change that yeah. so we say no let's have a level playing field okay. so everybody can benefit equally mm -hmm. from the shipping sector so again the important thing now is to show our seafarers policy makers mm -hmm. our persons how is it beneficial to you as an individual mm -hmm. and to the state and the health impacts that can occur if and when we embrace those type of technologies okay and an important area as well is in terms of what we call right now LNG, mm -hmm. that's liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, it's odorless. Um, they have less emissions right now. Mm -hmm. So the shipping industry right now are moving into the LNG type of, of fuel on board. Okay. And without having, um, having crude, um, which can, um, if it goes into the sea, Mm -hmm. then you have, you have further pollution. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that you can use a product, but there are always um, challenges mm -hmm. in terms of using a fuel. You know, if a ship spills oil right now, it takes a, a fortune to, yeah, to, to clean, clean the, the, yeah. the oil right now. Yeah. So if they move into the LNG, the liquefied natural gas right now, mm -hmm. it will be much easier, okay, to actually do any cleanup. So we want to, we want to um, facilitate, again, and we're hoping to leverage um, government yeah. to give further incentives um, to the industry wherein they can move into that area of efficiency. Mm -hmm. I spoke about the four-stroke engine. If we know it's a more efficient method of transportation, government um, can see the benefits mm -hmm. in terms of giving um, concessions or incentives for persons to move into that area. What it will do, it will reduce our footprint mm -hmm. as far as um, 
decarbonization mm -hmm. and as far as marine pollution mm -hmm. um, is concerned. Mm -hmm. So my task um, at um, Stasper Maritime Division mm -hmm. is to sensitize our policymakers um, as to various international conventions or standards that will positively impact the state. And I always, it's always important to me mm -hmm. to show the benefit of those type of relationships mm -hmm. to the country. We want to ensure the country can reap the benefits mm -hmm. of going into that particular area. Okay, all right. It, I think it's very important that you said that because one of the things that I was reading on the IMO um, website was the fact that um, small um, island developing states like St. Lucia and least developed countries are the ones that are being, uh, that really need to implement this more than anybody and anywhere else. Yes. Can you speak to that a bit for, for me? Yes. For, for example, a, a good um, a example would be marine litter. Right. Um, just imagine, um, again, it rains sometimes in our local context, mm -hmm. and you can see the amount of plastics that, that's coming down from our rivers into mm -hmm. our seas. Mm -hmm. And the persons are, um, in the inner land, maybe they're not aware of the impact that can create on shipping. Right. Okay, even even in terms of the, the uh, cruise ship com coming in, yeah. even us as, na as nationals, mm -hmm. nobody wants to see the harbor yeah, with all these plastics in it. Mm -hmm. But those plastics, they can also impact the ships. Mm -hmm. They can they can be um, they can get stuck in the propellers of those vessels there. They can, and because of that, the, the ship um, can harm in terms of um, the way they operate as well. Mm -hmm. So. Apart from that component, the other component will be that ships are out at sea. Yeah. They're trying to see how they can utilize um, the reduction of plastics on board. Mm. And there is an industry, mm -hmm. because shipping will, will always take place. I mean, it's a growing sector. So if St. Lucia right now can leverage in terms of um, recycling, for example, yeah. a ship comes in, mm -hmm. it has tons of, of um, plastic mm -hmm. on board, mm -hmm. and we have a recycling plant in St. Lucia, and it's not, it's not common in the Caribbean countries. Yeah. So right away you can create employment, yeah. you can create uh, uh, in, in terms of you can, by taking those measures, you can also reduce the dumping of plastics at sea. Mm -hmm. Because if a ship knows I can come to St. Lucia and I can um, be, probably uh, um, sell my, my plastics to you at a very, very minimal cost, mm -hmm. and then in St. Lucia we can recycle it, okay, then the, both the ship will, be, will see the benefits of it mm -hmm. in terms of uh, making a, a small um, revenue component and the, the country right now can recycle those plastics as well as keep the oceans clear. Mm -hmm. We don't want to pollute our, our sea area. We know we are tourist, yeah. touristic island. Yeah. So the less um, in terms of um, effect we can reduce on marine litter, mm -hmm. the better it is for us. Okay. And it's an opportune time to mention that St. Lucia right now is undergoing um, a, a marine litter consultation. Okay. Yes, so we basically seen how can we reduce the, the impact of marine litter mm -hmm. you know, on, on an island like St. Lucia. And mm -hmm. you can see it for us, we all are aware of it, yeah. but the idea is how can we legislate it? How can we make the ordinary person realize the impact it has when you release litter mm -hmm. into the marine environment? Mm -hmm. So it has to be a work in progress. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm, I'm not, I think it's, I cannot be discouraged because education is always an ongoing process. Right. You have to educate the masses and you have yeah. to keep on going yeah. um, through it again. Mm -hmm. So that's an important area that we want to do. The other area is in terms of um, preserving what we call um, biodiversity. Okay. How do you, how do we um, leverage biodiversity? How do we let um, persons embrace the idea of biodiversity? Mm -hmm. And we see it right now, maybe we need to go to the schools. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you, you know, if yeah. right now you can, you can have a child to tell a, tell a parent, you know, mm -hmm. don't do dumping or mm -hmm. utilize that technology instead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we can go to the schools, so we're hoping that before the end of this year, yeah. for us to now go into the schools right now. I think we, we've done all the boaters, we've done all our, our grown-ups right now. Yeah. I think now is to take the dive mm -hmm. into the schools and get some advocates from the school levels and hopefully they can um, speak with their parents and they can mm -hmm. change the mindset 
of the grown-ups. Okay, brilliant. Anyway, we're just going to have a little break, and then we're going to come back and carry on talking about um, the special day, the observance, and greener new technologies, yes, right, yes. for greener maritime activities. Uh, yes. We'll be right back. What is biodiversity? When you look at biodiversity, it's all around. I think of biological and I think of diversity. What is biosafety? In safety measures for our foods, our products, etc. Biodiversity is the variety of life. Biosafety, on the other hand, involves the management of products of biotechnology, such as GMOs and LMOs. Biosafety seeks to protect St. Lucia's biodiversity. The terms biodiversity and biosafety are not interchangeable. Get familiar with these terms. Observe the biodiversity around you, the change in environment of food production and sustainable growth. Do your part. Visit our websites and stay tuned to this station for more information on the National Biosafety Framework. Welcome back. Now, when I first started the program, I think I might have made a little faux pas where I said that um, World Maritime Day is actually going to be observed on the 29th. I have been corrected. It's actually the 28th, yeah, right? Yeah, it is tomorrow. Okay, so it's actually the 28th. So make sure you, you do your part and observe the day as well. But carry on with our conversation, Mr. Yes. Alexander. Now, the theme is linked to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, yeah? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how it all links together? So the, the UN, there are 17 goals within that, that um, the UNDG. Mm -hmm. And with it, we have one of the most important ones would be SDG 13, mm -hmm. which relates to, to climate change. And the greener technology, mm -hmm. it will have a positive impact in terms of reducing our footprint mm -hmm. as far as, as climate change is concerned. Right. And we may be a, a small island developing state, however, if a small footprint, but when you add all those small SIDs and mm -hmm. small island developing states together, mm -hmm. you can see the, the footprint in, ter in terms of the, the impact um, as far as pollution emissions are concerned. Mm -hmm. It can start to increase, and you can see. Um, the, the, the enlarging footprint. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that that SDG seeks to reduce the climate um, change or the impact we have on climate change. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to you earlier on in terms of the, the fuel mm -hmm. that the ships carry about and mm -hmm. Senusha having done it part by acceding to um, Annex 6 of the MAPOL Convention. Okay. So I refer to the Marine Pollution Convention. Mm -hmm. So there is that, that, that convention that St. Lucia signed on to all. There are six annexes. Mm -hmm. It includes um, plastic. It includes uh, um, ship waste. It includes um, sewage. Mm -hmm. It includes air pollution, which is um, with climate change. So that's an area that St. Lucia has moved on to. There's also another area in terms of Annex 14, okay. which speaks to sustainable oceans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you speak about sustainable oceans, we want to relate in terms of the impact of shipping on the sustainable use of the oceans. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we have now what's called the Anti-Fouling Convention. Okay. And what it does is basically when a ship travels, mm -hmm. when they normally paint the under, call it the bottom part for persons to get a better idea mm -hmm. of the ship mm -hmm. with a, a special type of paint. Mm -hmm. And what it does right now, it reduces um, the effect of organisms attaching themselves to the bottom oh. of that ship. Okay. And that's a paint. Mm -hmm. But you see, but what is the, 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 the connection between mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. But what it does is that the organisms that maybe you can call it barnacles that mm -hmm. most persons will know, mm -hmm. what it does, it creates drag on the ship. Okay. So instead of the ship having a smooth bottom to yeah. travel in the oceans there, yeah. all those things attach itself on the ship. What it does, it creates a, it weighs down the ship. Okay. Addition, any additional weight on the ship 
it, it increases the cost of fuel. Right. So okay. if you have your vehicle, for example, your mm -hmm. vehicle is laden with items mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're traveling, mm -hmm. the more items, the heavier the weight on your vehicle is, yeah. and you're going up a hill, yeah. you know, you will ex you, you use more fuel. Yes, yeah. So you can use that same analogy mm -hmm. to relate it to a ship as well. Okay. So if you can keep the bottom of that ship cleaner, mm -hmm. okay, it means the boat will travel faster. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have greater fuel efficiency. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the engine on, on that vessel will work better. Mm -hmm. So the faster ship can go, can go from point A to point B, mm -hmm. the less fuel it, it will consume, mm -hmm. the better it is for consumers as well. I understand. So that's the, the, the effect uh, as, as far as uh, we call it... Um, anti-fouling. Mm -hmm. So we don't we want to ensure those ships use the, the right product. Mm -hmm. However, there's also a disadvantage in terms of the, the anti-fouling paints. Because mm -hmm. right now, some of those paints right now, they can actually affect the marine life. Ah, they get okay, me? Because okay, you're, okay. you're, you're having those paints, the yeah. paint can be some that have chemicals in yeah, them. Yeah. So the IMO right now is saying how they can phase out that type of paint mm -hmm. and use a more um, I can say um, um, friendly paint that will not affect mm. in terms of the marine life. Yeah. Again, that goes back to having the, the shipping um, the shipping sector, mm -hmm. but using it in a sustainable manner mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. Sustainability also refers to in, even in terms of the speed of ships. Mm. Sometimes you know you have your vehicle, the faster you have your vehicle, the more fuel you consume. Mm -hmm. If you go to cruising speed. You get to the point you are you mm -hmm. to the point A and, and um, to point B, yeah. but you have consumed less fuel. Right. The less fuel you expand is the less fuel you put into mm -hmm. the atmosphere mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So th there's always a connection that the IMO is seeking to bring about. Mm -hmm. The other one would be um, SDG nine, mm -hmm. and it speaks in terms of innovation um, partnership sharing technologies yeah. with countries. So we have the IMO, you have all those technocrats, the scientists at the IMO. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they would speak to industry partners out there and say, okay, how can we improve the shipping sector? How right. can we enhance productivity? Mm -hmm. How can we enhance fuel, the fuel economy? Mm -hmm. And basically when that is, is, um, is green right now, there are various committees and those committees meet and they share the information across the board. Mm -hmm. Because all the 174 member states, because there are 174 member states, meaning mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. that, are, that are represented at the IMO. Mm -hmm. So when all of them meet right now, we say, okay, here's a new technology right now which will enhance fuel, mm -hmm. the, the fuel um, utilization. Mm -hmm. We will adopt that type of technology. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they would vote. Okay and say, okay, are we adopting that standard? Mm -hmm. And once it's adopted right now, it becomes basically, it becomes an IMO, an IMO convention. Okay, so Mr. Alexander, time is upon us. We're gonna come to the end of the program soon. But before we go, I would like to know, like as the Director of Maritime Affairs in St. Lucia, what would you like to see um, happening in the instant future occurring in St. Lucia for, um, in regards to greener shipping? What would you like to see? In terms of the way forward, uh, one of the issues um, we've had was in terms of legislation mm -hmm. to ensure that we have the, the requisite um, enforcement or mm -hmm. oversight uh, as to those areas as it relates to, to climate change, to marine litter, mm -hmm. in terms of um, plastics um, from ships at sea. Mm -hmm. And um, we are working on having all the boats that are going out to sea, especially the, the larger boats doing the, the boat rides, mm -hmm. that they have a, a plastic litter planned. Okay. So I want to know, okay, when you're out at sea there, how do you handle the plastic waste on board? Mm -hmm. That is something that's very, very, very important mm -hmm. um, to us. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to um, leverage or encourage our policymakers uh, to give um, concessions 
to persons that are using, utilizing efficient engines. Mm -hmm. For example, moving away from the two stroke mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and going into the four stroke. Mm -hmm. It will um, enhance efficiency. Mm -hmm. It will um, reduce the cost of fuel to our seafarers. And likewise, the, the customers, they will benefit from a reduction in the cost of transportation mm -hmm. um, from those um, operate, operators. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the other one I'm hoping to see um, is also the, the awareness of persons have in terms of the, the workings of the International Maritime Organization. Mm. And I'm hoping to have a greater um, interaction with the public mm -hmm. at large. Mm -hmm. Again, shipping is 80% of goods are shipped mm -hmm. on the sea. Mm -hmm. And the ordinary folk are not even aware of that or the significance. And I want the seafarers to know likewise their contribution to the maritime sector. The seafarers are very, very important um, to St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I mean, those persons who carry our, our tourists, our nationals, um, those persons um, who do um, cargo shipment as well, they are critical to the economic lifeblood of St. Lucia. When a cruise ship comes in, there's a, a nexus between the cruise ships and the, and the, the, the local boating sector. They're the ones who carry the persons down the coast. We have to ensure that those persons that do it in a safe method. And likewise, if it's sustainability, it means that the livelihood um, would be guaranteed. So we want to continue sustainability in terms of the use of the maritime sector, educate persons in terms of the impact that the behavior of plastics can have on the environment, and um, let them know that they are contributing towards the reduction in climate change mm -hmm. when they adopt safe boating practices as well. So that's what, in terms of educating the public, let them know that they are, they are, they are, um, they, they are needed, that we, we value their con contribution towards the economic library of St. Lucia, and likewise create employment as well. Yeah. So there are employment benefits mm -hmm. to be gained if we can embrace, or when we further embrace those type of policies and technologies. Okay, brilliant. Well, as always, it's always a pleasure having you here and, and, and speaking with you, Mr. Alexander. So thank yes. you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, you're All welcome. Right. Yeah, and thanks. thank you for joining us here at uh, for TV30 at NTN. However, it's time for me to go. However, I do hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.